sharing something with you this morning. My week started out real crazy last Monday. And, uh, and uh, anyways, uh, Jamie had a job to do up in, in Spring Creek by Elko. And uh, so she was going to drive up there. And uh, it's like, okay. And so I put in for the day off to go up with her. And uh, so anyways, we, we were discussing what we were going to do. We are going to drive up for the day. And she goes, I think we need to take the bus. And if some of you guys know about the bus, it's big. Um, anyways, I was like, for one day? And God says, just go, go. That's all I kept going, getting was go. And so then I asked God, I says, God, but, you know, it's not really sensible to drive up there for one day. Those of you guys who know the mileage you get in those things. It, it doesn't make sense. God says, go. I said, all right. So we headed out, went up there, awesome time heading up. And there was, there was some battles going into this. And God said, no. Every time I pick something up, what about this? He'd say, no. And I've never had God talk to you. I don't know if God's talked to you in this way before, but it was simple, no. And then I was talking to him about something else, and I just kept getting peace, peace. Now, you guys know me. I'm a workaholic. That's the old man. That's the old man behind me, not this guy anymore. Um, that's the testifying. You guys that grab onto that because you got to know. Uh, when something's wrong or something needs to be fixed, I get out and do it, and I'll I'll work my fingers to the bone to get it done. Something that God has been dealing with me. Anyways, so we get up there. Uh, Jamie has an awesome class. I get to visit my sister, and it just things are happening that I cannot explain. Um, and there were some issues in my family, and we got to pray over that and minister to the family. And then uh, I picked up Jamie and I says, well, let's, let's go sit down and eat lunch somewhere. And uh, so we drove up to the head of Lemoyle, well, the big rig to be driving up there. And we pulled up there and I says, it'd be neat if we could park over here in the shade and just look at the mountain and just kick back. And we pulled up there in this gravel spot that's up there at the head of the pass, at the top of the Lemoyle Canyon, is empty. It's never empty, guys. This is like everybody's choice place. So we pull in there, we open the windows, and there's the mountains. And so we just kick back. We spent two hours doing nothing, looking at the mountains and talking, praising God and having lunch. And I was like, I said, wow, this don't happen. We head back down. We went over to my sister's house. We had an awesome time there. Uh, we had a place to go park for the night. We went and did that. Everything just happened. The next morning we got up about 7 o'clock. I put coffee on, cooked breakfast. We sat in the bus and just talked about God and our lives together and just chatted. I, we don't do this. We're busy bodies. We're, we're, uh, busy bodies not the right word. We're busy all the time. And the checkout was 12 o'clock that day. And I, Jamie goes, well, let me get showered and do a few things and then we'll head out. She goes, what time is it? I says, it's 11.30. <laughs> we had blown like four and a half hours just sitting there doing nothing. And so we headed out. And peace upon this whole thing. We head home. We're coming down I-80 and we come through Battle Mountain. And, uh, and we're just kicking back, driving along. And I look in the rearview mirror and there's smoke everywhere. And I'm like, uh-oh. So I shut the bus down and, and you guys know me, I'd be frustrated, I'm gonna fix it, I'm gonna do what needs to be done. And God just said, take your time. I got out and I realized, okay, this is something I can't fix. I'm gonna need a record. And this is expensive. And, and so then I sat there and I go, wait a minute, I got full coverage on this thing. And so, as, and I wanted to cancel it, you know. I mean, these are little things, but it all comes together. So I call and they say, oh yeah, we got it handled. So it's gonna be like seven hours. So I call up Jamie's brother that lives in Battle Mountain and he comes and picks us up. We go visit him and everything. Anyways, this whole time we're asking God, what's, what are you doing here? 
because God's always got something planned. If you don't think so, look out. He's got a plan, guys. You just got to have your ears open. You got to have your eyes open and focused on Him. So, anyways, I talked to the dispatcher for the wrecker, and she says, we got the man you need. I was like, oh, okay, you know, <laughs> whatever. This guy shows up. God was over the whole thing. I, the whole time through, we're talking, and he goes, he goes, you minister? And I says, yeah, and I says, yeah, we're, we're talking about it. And he goes, here's where I'm at. So we just started working through his life, driving in the, we got to ride in the wrecker with him and talked the whole way home. We got home about 3.30 Saturday morning and he goes, I've never had a ride like that before. He says, that was cool. And we, I mean, we took information and we're gonna further this, but I ask you, what is your purpose today? If you're gonna get stuck somewhere that you don't think you're gonna get stuck or you don't wanna be in that position, Maybe God has you there for a reason. I'm just telling you guys, this is how it is. I could have thrown a fit. I could have gotten all greasy. I could have done a lot of things, but God says, be still. Be still. Don't do this. I thought I could go and fix, try to tear part of this part. He goes, stop. So all along the way, he was my peace. Every time I thought I should have something I could accomplish here in this moving this bus, he said, be still. And that's what the guy showed me. Before I knew he was a Christian that picked us up with the wrecker, he says, you just go kick back. We got it handled. And I thought that was kind of weird. He said, we got it handled. It was only him. <laughs> so God has a sense of humor. God has it handled. I don't care what your mess is today. I don't care what it is you're going through. I mean, I do, but I don't. God has it handled, guys. Find out what he's doing in it. Find out what the mission is. A sister was up here and she says, I want to know my marching orders. What's your marching orders? You may, you may be standing in mud, but what's your marching orders? Because you're really not standing in mud, guys. It just looks like it. It just looks like it. My day looked really poopy on Friday. It looked really bad. And my wife, Dr. Jamie, she just sat there and looked at me because, wow, this guy's not losing it. He's not mad. He's not. In fact, he's making a pot of coffee to drink. Yeah. And chatting with people. So I want you to get that piece. You can't fix it. You can't make it, guys. You have to receive it. And if there's something that's holding you back from receiving it, empty out your garbage can. Empty it out, guys. That's what I had to do. Find those things that hold you back. Those things, that person that you haven't forgiven. Maybe a little thing, maybe a big thing. That person you might be frustrated with. It might be something that you had forgot about in your past. Or maybe it's just the worry about taking care of something. God's bigger than that, guys. He's bigger than that. Yeah, there's battles, and there's always going to be battles. But who do they belong to? Do they belong to us? No. They belong to Him. But He can't take them until we give them to Him. We always say these crazy things. I know I'm rambling on here. We say these crazy things about... If God would just take this, you know what God's doing? He's going, if He would just give it to me. Think about it. we got to give it to Him, put Him in charge of it. Now He can handle it. But we have to, we have to release it. We have to let it go. Those people, who, many, who do you own in your life? Do you hold on to your wife and not let her be a part of God? Do you hold on to your children and not let them be a part of God? your grandchildren or the neighbor that drives you nuts do you hold on to them have you released them and forgiven them and said lord that neighbor is yours now man now we're gonna we're, now we're gonna get him <laughs> i don't know what it is for you but let's pray real quick because i feel that, that we need to be praying over this so father right now as we reach deep inside help us to see what it is that we're not letting go 
Help us to see what that is. If it's a person or just stress or maybe it's money or, or just a battle that, that holds on to us. Father, we just take that out right now and we hand it to you. We put you in charge of this, Father, because we cannot carry it anymore. We can't carry that person anymore. So forgive us for carrying that. And Father, we thank you for taking it. Father, it's yours right now. You're in charge. Thank you for the peace that you fill in me, Father. Fill me up. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Apparently God wants everybody to get the same thing, huh? The songs were in my, I'm in a fight, not physical. The sermon that uh, Wes just preached is in where in a fight, not physical. And what is, what is the, I wrote down <clears throat> in prayer this week, uh, the battle is not yours, but God's. You will not need to fight in this battle. So go to 2 Chronicles 20 with me just for a second. Hey, that's a weird sounding microphone there. Because Matt isn't here, that's why. Sounds all right. Second Chronicles? That's in the Old Testament, I think. It's on the left, anyway. It's after First Chronicles. Yeah, it's right after First Chronicles. <laughs> right before Ezra. <laughs> Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles. I always liked it that way. You know, the Bible says we're in a war. It's not physical. 1 Corinthians, we're supposed to take every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ, right? Yes. Anybody here ever really done that perfectly? Yes. Okay, good. I'm glad we're in the same crowd. Has anybody in here really figured you should be able to? Yes. Amen. Me too. I figure if the gospel is going to say something, I ought to put up or shut up. So I was thinking that if I can't do it, who can? Okay. If nobody I know has ever done it, then what's up? So if I'm supposed to bring, bring these things into the obedience of Jesus Christ, I think that uh, his obedience is important, more important than mine. If I'm going to depend on somebody, I might as well depend on the Holy Spirit to work these things in me. Otherwise, I'm just trying my hardest to do this. I have tried and tried to live righteous before God, and all that has brought me is condemnation, uh, frustration, <laughs> hallelujah, it's brought me judgment on other people and things like that. Oh, yeah, beat them up. <laughs> <laughs> so praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and... Uh... Come on. Come on. Come on. Follow that woman there. The one in the purple. The yeah. Paper. Jehoshaphat's king of Jerusalem a long, long time ago when the children of Judah all worshipped the Lord from the high on down to the low. And Judah was a wealthy kingdom. Everybody's children were fed. So the Lord God answered the people and said, I forget the words. Okay. <laughs> so go to the scriptures instead. It says that <clears throat> King Jehoshaphat was ruling in Jerusalem and three armies came against King Jehoshaphat. And King Jehoshaphat knew that he couldn't lick these guys because there's three armies against his one. So the thing he did is what I'm going to read about, but first we're going to pray. So we, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the message that's already been uh, gone forth in this place. What is it? What is it that only you can handle that we're trying to? What is this warfare that we're doing that's not physical? And Lord, I pray that you show us somehow today how to fight this thing and do it right. We thank you for this, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
So there, it says in the 12th verse, O Lord our God, we will, we will not judge them, for we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Amen. Sometimes we get our eyes upon ourselves and what we can do for ourselves, and we don't turn them towards God. Uh, now Judah and all, with all their little ones and their wives and children stood before the Lord, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mattaniah, the Levite, the son of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. <sighs> and he said, Listen, all you Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord God to you, do not be afraid or dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Amen. And that's the very thing that God spoke to me this week. It's really hot right there. He said, the battle is not yours, but God's. So it says it right there, the battle is not yours. God. Look at what God tells them. Tomorrow, go down against them. Amen. Well, if the battle ain't yours, but yours, Ah, well, if the battle's not ours but yours, why are we going down against them? Obedience. Yeah. Have you ever asked God that? If I don't got to fight in this battle, why do I got to go to the battle? What is this battle for? I want you to know every battle you're going through right now is, is for you. It's to increase your faith. It's to increase your character. What you're going through right now is to minister grace to you so that you might minister grace to somebody else. In fact, what you're going through right now is the very thing you'll be able to minister to somebody else for. Amen. Hallelujah. you, you got to know it. i got a story, but I ain't going to tell it yet. Okay. <laughs> so it says, Go down tomorrow against them. Surely they come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Now, if you were in a battle... And you know where they were going to attack you in those three armies. Would you go the same way? I'd go the other way. The Bible says if you see trouble coming and don't avoid it, you're an idiot. <laughs> now when we were kids, well when we were young, we'd see a battle and we'd go over there. Right? We'd see a battle, we'd go over there and get in on the battle. After we're a little older and we're a little weaker and we're not quite as wired as we used to be, we see a battle and we go around the stupid battle. <laughs> we're not idiots, okay? We're not kids. Praise the Lord. So if you're a kid and you're still going to the battle, snap out of it. Okay, now listen to this. In the 17th verse it says, you will not need to fight in this battle. And here's what you do. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. Now do you suppose these people for one second were all holy dudes? <laughs> so righteous they were walking on water and, and they were absolutely obedient and that's why the Lord was going to bless them and help them? Sometimes we get to thinking that. We think God's going to help me today because I've been good. Or God's going to help me today because I haven't screwed up totally and I haven't done that same sin I've done every day. Just one, this one day, maybe I won't do it, maybe God can bless me. <coughs> okay? Okay, salvation of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem? Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. You're not going to have to fight in this battle. This battle is not yours, but God's. But go down there and fight anyway. <coughs> so look at what he did. And Jehoshaphat <coughs> bowed his face and his head to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Yeah. Now there is the secret. What did the leader do? He got on his face before the Lord and started crying out to God. What did the rest of the people do? They followed in kind. What did they do? They start praising the Lord. They start praising the Lord for what? His mercy endures forever. Not that, oh Lord, I thank you that we are holy. <laughs> no, thank God His mercy endures forever. The only thing that's getting us through is His mercy. What do you need His mercy for? You need His mercy when you sin. Hmm. Romans 5, 8. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When we were without strength, even when we were out without strength, 
Jesus died for the ungodly. You can go ahead and say that. Jesus died for the ungodly. Amen. <laughs> of course, that's not you guys. No, I'm saved. I'm godly. God bless me because I'm no holy Joe. <laughs> I want you to know Jesus Christ did not come to save the righteous. He came to save sinners. That's who he came for. Even when you were without strength. Now I want you to know Jehoshaphat at this point in time was without strength. If you're without strength today, that's you're the one that Jesus Christ came for. And you need to get in your head, down in your heart somewhere, that Jesus Christ came to save sinners. He died to save sinners. The next time the enemy comes to you, you stupid sucker, look what you just did again. Oh, thank you for reminding me of that. Bless you, devil. Yeah, Jesus Christ came to save sinners. You're right, I am a sinner. He came for me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right. And what does Jehoshaphat say? Lord, these, uh, we have no power over these guys, but our eyes are on you. In Hebrews 12, 1, it says, in fact, I'm going to read that just before I go on. I'll read it so I don't misquote it. Hebrews 12, 1. Oh, I love this part. It says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, now these witnesses are the heroes of faith. They weren't the holy Joes who got their act together and God blessed them. They were the people who believed God and received things from God by His grace. And they received it by faith. Now watch this. Let us lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. How? Run with endurance the race set before us. How do you run with endurance the race set before us? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Woo! Hallelujah! For the joy set, that was set before him, he endured the cross. Despising the shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility of sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. I don't know about you, the enemy comes not but to steal and to kill and destroy. Man. He wants to kill you. He wants to kill your very soul. Your soul is your mind, your emotions, your will. He wants to destroy your emotions. Get you so screwed up you can't even see straight. Get you so frustrated you can't even look past your own nose and you're looking at other people and thinking, why am I so frustrated? And then you get mad at yourself for being frustrated. Now you're mad at your, you're frustrated with yourself for being so frustrated with other people that you're frustrated with. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Oh, look at that. Be unless you become weary or discouraged in your souls, in your mind, in your emotions, in your will. Uh, hallelujah. Duh. Now, where are, we, where are we at? Okay, Joseph bowed his feet, head to the ground, and they began to worship the Lord. Then the Levites and the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Ko Kohathites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high, with their faces on the ground, repented before the Lord, believed in the repentance that God gives. Then they stood up, began to praise the Lord. They didn't drag around with their noses on the ground, feeling sorry for themselves. Amen. They decided that God was able to forgive them for his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. They put their faces on the ground and they stood up. Stood. Oh, God is alive. Here we all go there. See how it works? Oh, dear God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> and what did they do then? They praised him with loud and high voices. So they rose early in the morning and went out. So they got right with God. They stood up to praise him. The next morning, they was not avoiding the battle. They got up early to get with it. They're going to go down and see what God would do. So they went down into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem and Fernley. Believe in the Lord your God, <laughs> and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when they had consulted with the people, he appointed those who would sing to the Lord and should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army of the Lord, saying, Praise ye the Lord, for His mercy endures forever. Praise ye the Lord, for His mercy endures forever and ever. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. Now watch this. They bowed before the... They, they knew they were without strength. 
Okay? We know you're without strength. You're a person without strength. They bowed before the Lord that they're facing to the ground after the prophet has spoken. This is not your battle. This is God's battle. You will not have to fight in this battle. But go down tomorrow. They put their faces on the ground, believed the prophets, raised up, began to praise the Lord. And they showed him. And then the next day they get up early to go out and sit. And when, he be, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the people of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir to come against Judah. And they were defeated. Hallelujah. So how do you do this? Well, it says right there, you can just praise the Lord. Woo. You know God has called you? If you were already condemned, you probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> Alright? If you were apostate, have you ever got to Hebrews 5 and, and read them scriptures about Man, if you sin after you've come to the knowledge of the truth and tasted of the glorious things of God, and but if you fall away, you're screwed. I thought, God, why go on? I'm screwed. Have you ever felt like that? Go there just for a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read that just for a minute, and, and I'm not gonna take very long because Wes already preached my sermon. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary, uh, this is six, elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptism, laying on of hands, resurrection from the dead, and eternal judgment. For this we will do if God permits us. For, this, for it is impossible for those who are once enlightened have tasted the heavenly gift, have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away, to renew them again to repentance, since they have crucified again themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinks in the rain and often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those who um, it is cultivated, receive blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and nearly to be incursed and those whose end is to be burned. Now I want you to know, that's pretty hairy scripture. But he says, those who completely turn away. If you have become apostate already, and have totally turned away from Christ, you wouldn't be here. He's not talking about people that are backslidden and fighting with sin and trying to do this and not able to do it. Read Romans 7 and 8 and 6 sometimes. Okay? He's not talking about those guys. He's talking about those guys who have tasted the things of God. I don't think these people are ever in love with Jesus. They just wanted the cool stuff from God. They they felt the Holy Ghost, wah, 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 you know, and, and certain, you know, they're they're the ones on uh, on uh, on thorny uh, on a rocky soil. They hear the word, it springs up quickly, but as soon as you know, as soon as bad things happen, they turn away and say, Oh God, yeah, man. Or those people who who the thorns come up and they choke the word, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and things like that, and they, the word is choked out of them. And they just go back on God. Those are not you. Why, why, why am I saying this? It says in 9, it says, But beloved, we are convinced of better things concerning you. <laughs> yes, things that come company salvation, though we speak in this manner. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Do not become lazy. What, what is lazy? Lord, I just feel terrible today. Lord, where is she? I'm freaking out today. Oh Lord, you know what to do. Start speaking the Word of God over yourself. I ain't freaking out. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power and love and of a sound mind. Oh, I, Lord, I feel like a sinner today. Yeah, but Jesus Christ came to die for sinners. Hallelujah. You need to not become lazy in your faith and receive those lies from the enemy thinking they're from you. You don't want to receive lies from the enemy. Why would you do that? That's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, but I'm so bad. Yeah, okay. <laughs> for when God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself saying, Surely, blessing, I'll bless you. 
multiplying, I will multiply you. Not because Abraham was a holy Job. If you ever read the scripture, God gives the good, bad, and the ugly. Find out who Abraham was like. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. He walked through this thing just like you. Amen. Now watch this. In 17 it says, Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability or the unchanging of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable or unchanging things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. We have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. Watch this. This hope we have is an anchor to the soul. We don't depend on our faith, you guys. We depend on God. Amen. We depend on His grace. Your faith wavers. It comes in and out, but the grace of God is solid. Amen. It is forever. Amen. The Word of God is solid. It's forever. God is solid. It's forever. Your faith goes up and down, so we don't depend on our faith. You, we depend on the one we have faith in. Thank you, Lord. If you think you don't have faith today, go to the anchor of your soul. Okay. Now, this hope is an anchor to the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil. Hallelujah. For the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Therefore he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also a mediator of a better covenant which establishes on better promises. Now if you want to read that sometime, you just go ahead. 7 through 13. Hebrews 8, 7 through 13. If you want to find out what the law was for and what the new covenant is. I'm not going to read it to you right now. You guys are get your own. But at 12 and 13 it says, For I will have mercy to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I'll remember no more. Amen. I don't know about you, I need God to forget about my yes. sins. Yes. Amen. I need God to forgive me and wash me clean. Yes. So, in the next time the enemy brings up your past or your sins or whatever you've done, just remind them. Yes. Don't remind them of his future. Remind them who you are. Yes. He can figure out his own deal. <laughs> And then he says, a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete is growing old, ready to vanish away. That's the old covenant. <laughs> anyway, I could go on and on. Huh? Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to read you these few more scriptures. In the verse, um, uh, chapter 9, 13, it says, For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling of the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve a living God? You want your conscience cleared? It's at the cross, man. It's the blood that cleanses your conscience away. It isn't your wonderful repentance. I want you to know that. Okay, it's the blood that cleanses your sins away. It's the blood. It's the love of God. It's the grace of God who brings you to a place of repentance. It isn't repentance that brings you to a place of grace. Hallelujah. It's Jesus Christ who brought you out of darkness into light so you could repent. It's not that you repented and you came to the light. No, you came to the light and Jesus Christ cleansed you so you could repent. Otherwise, we're just playing this religious game. i got to get my act together. i got to get my act together. God already got your act together. Go ahead and obey Him and fall in love with Him, and you will supernaturally, natural, start walking in the peace and the power of God. Yes. Start speaking Amen. over your life what is true, yes. rather than what the enemy speaks to you. Amen. Let God be glorified. Let God be, glor Let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. When your thoughts go against the scriptures, guess who's wrong? <laughs> Woo, glory to God. You know, I, I told you last week that you need to pray and seek God until you receive that the presence of God in your life, that feeling that what isn't a feeling is a feeling. Okay, listen. Some of you have been so screwed up in your life, you couldn't spend five minutes in the presence of God if you wanted to. 
You've never learned to reason. You've never learned to be patient. You've never learned to be still. You've never learned to think or anything like that. And therefore, for you to come to a place where you stay in the presence of God is almost impossible. Okay? So, just go there as long as you can. <laughs> just know that He's not going to reject you there. He's not going to beat up on you if you leave early. Amen. <laughs> okay? Just realize He loves you. He wants you to grow. He wants you to... You'll grow. I, I gave this, this little uh, thing to a bunch of teenagers one time, uh, an assignment. I said, I want you to spend five minutes in the presence of God this week every day. Now anybody can spend five minutes. Anybody. You can walk up and down and pray in tongues for five minutes and, and then get out of there. Okay? So I gave them that the next week they came on that youth Sunday. They came and they says, and I said, well how did your prayer time go? And I was expecting different results. And this one girl stood up she says, five minutes wasn't enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. In your presence, Lord, yes. the mountains melt like wax. See, in the presence of God, the mountains in your life, they'll melt like wax. Yes. Jesus has already done the work. Allow him to do the work in you and in other people. Let the patience of God be yours. This is a fight. This is a fight. And the fight is to go ahead and have faith and believe God. And like, uh, like Buster says, receive. Yes. Because when you pray, believing God, yes. and you pray to a place where you actually believe Him and receive what He has, Thank you, Lord. then the peace of God is yours. Thank you, Lord. That's what you call faith. Well, I just don't have a lot of faith. <laughs> well, don't try to have any more, okay? <laughs> Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus. If you are without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's looking unto Jesus. It's not trying to harder to have faith. It's looking unto Jesus. It's not me trying to get my faith together. It's me looking unto Jesus. It's not me trying not to sin. It's looking unto Jesus. Amen. How do you not do? Everybody knows we shouldn't sin. It's just the how-tos that we get confused on. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'll rebuke the devil. I'll rebuke the devil. God. Okay. Once in a while, when he shows up, run him off. But if he's not there, don't rebuke him. Just bring your mind back into shape. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, faith is substance. Faith becomes substance. If you believe God and you receive from God, your faith is the guarantee of what's going to happen. How many here have got a word from God about your kids? And you begin to speak those things over your kids. And now they're old and they're coming to pass. Hallelujah. See, you had to have faith and patience to watch some things come to pass. Why? Because when you spoke them over your kids, your kids were littler. <laughs> it took a while for them to grow into that thing that you prophesied over them. It takes a while sometimes for God to go ahead and do stuff. Hallelujah. So, so I, I'm just going to quit there. Praised him loud and high. I love that part where they where they fell down on their knees and they raised up and praised him loud and high. Oh, hallelujah. Hi, Joey. So Lord, we thank you for your grace. We depend on you, God. This life we live is by grace through faith. We receive today what we need from you. Lord, we've we've turned our back on our sin as much as we can. We've turned our back on the world, but we've fixed our eyes on you. Whatever's still hanging on, God, I know is going to drop off as we keep coming towards you. Because the closer we get to you, the world cannot stay. We love you, God. We honor you today. And we believe, God, you're, re you're, re you're bringing back to us what the locusts have eaten and the canker worm has stolen away. Yes. We thank you for these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So, yeah, we're going to do the thing.
Hallelujah. So Lord, we thank you for letting us give today. We're excited about this. We're th thankful for microphones. And we're thankful for where you're leading us, Lord. And we just uh, trust you completely with our finances. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Joe. Praise the Lord. So excited. You know, I know you guys are pretty wired, but I got one short story. Wes got to tell the story. <laughs> Yesterday, Regina and I went to Reno, and we we're going to go to Verdi, but we got sidetracked, so we had to go out to South Virginia. So we're going out to South Virginia, we're going to, going to go up to Virginia City. It's our date day, right? This is a Friday. We're going to go our date day up to Virginia City, but we're driving along. I realized that I haven't, hadn't called my friend Leslie yet. And Leslie is uh, a real old friend, she did dear friend. Her husband is a dear friend of mine. I used to live with them. We used to be roommates. And anyway, we're driving, and they had lost their daughter just two days before. Her, their daughter had died, and so we were going along the road. And I realized that, and so my sister had texted me a number. So I was going to text my sister, and, and I was there, and I just I looked and I, I punched the blue thing, and and, I, and Leslie answers. And I realized I punched her phone in, right? Leslie asked, she says, hi, man, how you doing? I said, yeah, how you doing? Uh, uh, what's going on? She says, well, we're going to lunch out at Summit at Miguel's. I said, Summit what? Summit, the Summit uh, mall. mall. Summit Mall at Miguel's. I just, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like 500 yards from the cutoff to the Summit Mall. So we had a thing, you know, I didn't cut anybody off, but it was close. But we just got in. What, what are the chances, what are the chances that I would just happen to punch that number, she would answer, and there at Miguel's. And I got, and we got to run into them, we got to say hi to these. It was just a divine, just absolutely divine appointment. It was the coolest thing. And then that evening, uh, I, we went out to pray. Instead of praying, we talked about things. And I got so angry, I started cussing and carrying on. And, and I'm thinking, and the next, the next morning I woke up and I thought, aha, so victory in Jesus doesn't necessarily mean you have victory in the afternoon. <laughs> Your battle doesn't end just because you had a victory. We were supposed to go and pray. Instead, we went to de discuss things. If we would have been in the presence of the Lord, that never would have happened. Instead, we, we discussed things and all, all hell broke loose. And I'm thinking, what? and I was so mad at myself, I could have kicked myself if my foot would have fit. I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't get it up there anymore, you know? So anyway, I just want you to know that this battle is real. And it's really exciting because I repented yesterday and this morning again. And we both got free. Instead of hanging on to that for a week, Amen. huh? Instead of fighting and hanging on to that for a week, and you're kind of, how you doing? I'm very good, I sucker. You know? <laughs> so anyway, praise the Lord. Praise God. Yeah. I just have to tell you one thing. We were delivered food a week ago Friday, and it was so hot and miserable, and people weren't home, and you're getting madder and madder. So we get to the last house and they're not home. We call them and they answer the phone and says, Oh, we're out camping. <laughs> and we had we had to really repent because we said, Okay, bye. Okay, I mean, bye. We, were, we were not nice, we were not friendly, we were hot, we were tired, and it was like, I am so sorry, God, we got home and I said, We just screwed up. So guess what? When we get home, our neighbor across the street just lost part of his foot due to diabetes, oh. has no money and no food, and we have a whole box. Oh. Hallelujah. And I'm going, Amen. I'm sorry, God. You had it all planned in the first place. Amen. He's got a plan. Amen. 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 That's right. I think, Chris, I thought you guys were perfect. Now in my opinion, I'm so oh. bad. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful time today. Pastor Grant, I have a testimony. Oh, come on in the microphone.